Hello, 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 and welcome. My name is Antler Boy. Welcome to my 116 survival world. Let's take a look around, shall we? Yeah, I definitely don't have these leads on me because a wandering trader tried to uh, interrupt my intro. Definitely not. <laughs> A pigman wanted to get in on the fun and ruin my intro as well. As I was saying, right before the interruptions, let's take a look around. Now as you enter my area, I wanted sort of something special for the entrance, so I made this enchanted forest with these trees overhanging a, a drawbridge over a great ravine or, or cliff, this giant sinkhole right here with, with a little lake at the bottom, with the sun rays sifting through through the leaves. I just wanted it to be something sort of different, something to uh, separate my nether portal area from the rest of my kingdom. And so to access the rest of my world, you just walk across this bridge under the canopy and you enter through this little uh, arch right here. And it gets you all the way through to the market. So for the time being, this marketplace is really just where I store some of my items. I plan to put villagers in the stalls and have some useful trades and move them to where I have them at the moment. Uh, but this is where I keep my golden carrots and I think I have a supply of mending books. The plan is to really expand this area and, and make some more market stalls. The market continues down onto the uh, boardwalk down here, where I do plan to have some, uh, some smaller boats coming in from a larger harbor. So yeah, down here on the boardwalk, I have a few more stands. I have some pumpkin and melon stands, which I plan to make larger farms for in the future so that I can stock up and have more of these building blocks because I just think you can build some pretty nice looking farming areas and pumpkin patches using these blocks to really make your world look better. Now, I will say that this was the first terraforming project I really took on, and it was not the easiest and not the most fun to just place all these blocks but with time I've gotten a lot better at it and a lot more efficient at my uh, at my cliff building so what I really wanted is to have a lot of variation in my terrain and have things like this arch and one thing I didn't even plan on at the time that just sort of line up and lined up very well and that is that when you walk through across the bridge here you actually see that archway in the back through this archway and I think it lines up very well and it gives just a very nice sight line and uh, ever since I accidentally stumbled upon that I've been working on some uh, sight lines and perspectives a lot just to uh, just to make things look a little bit more artistically neat. So a big problem I ran into when building this world is that it doesn't really make sense to have a vertical kingdom and have a way for the people to actually move supplies up and down these tiers so uh, what I did is I thought about this sort of crane system that I could have that I haven't developed too much but I've built this crane on one level and so the idea is that the supplies come in from the larger harbor that's going to be built and uh, these crates get picked up by the crane and moved up and as you'll see there's another crane up there and uh, the cranes sort of continue and to have that be the system and I'm not really sure how I feel about it but for now it's what I've been going with and I think it's uh, it's something that can be cool it makes it sort of uh, half steampunk half medieval fantasy but uh, it's something I'm working on coming back up these steps I talked about them being tiers these different levels and so the point is to have just these sort of levels of residential areas and and places for, for houses to be, for people to live, and have them get sort of increasingly richer as you go up them. And so this part I built very, very early on. So I have this little tree here and this little intersection with a few houses. And so far they don't have too much uh, function in this house. I've been storing my villagers. So I have my mending guy and my my unbreaking guy in here. But it's really not my primary villager station. Uh, but as I said before, the point of this house was to make a way for supplies to be able to move up and down levels. So I have this crane, and I've made this area in the back here where uh, basically the, the villagers store their, uh, their supplies for being moved up to other areas, or maybe moved to shops, or to whoever's ordered them, basically. And so I have this other platform here for the crane to lift up the stuff to the next level. And this is stuff I've been working on and, and prototyping and just sort of 
want to improve a lot. I'm not sure how I feel about the cranes, but you'll see when I get up there. And so fitting that theme and fitting in with all that stuff, I've got this uh, storage area, and I'm going to be building up these storage houses for keeping the stuff, you know, the goods in general, for uh, when they need to be moved up or used elsewhere. So coming over this way, uh, the plan for this path is to continue over here out onto this little precipice or uh, peninsula that goes out here. My, my original plan was to build a lighthouse right here, and so that's what I think I'm going to do. I've just sort of laid out where it's going to be, and so that's uh, a plan for one of the next episodes coming up. From here, you can get a good look at all the progress so far of the whole village. The reason I built this mountain was to build a large castle up there, and it is actually finished. I just finished it the other day. So we're going to be taking a look at that. Returning this way, there are other things to see on this uh, on this tier. So we've got this little wagon here, and I plan on making a lot more of these. I think it just makes the world come alive to have these small little vehicles and structures everywhere. Coming down this way, I built this diagonal house, and it's really been a learning experience building these diagonal houses on the 45 degree angle and on not as steep an angle like this, but I think it's been coming together quite nice. Walking this way, you uh, come across the original archway where you come into the kingdom, and you can get this sort of overview of the, the little valley down here with the uh, overhanging canopy. And so walking under these leaves right here, you get to a little residential area that I've, I've started and not finished yet. Uh, and it's something that I think is looks really nice. So I have this little house right here. Uh, it's actually one of the bigger ones, and uh, I am working on the interiors for all these houses. Some some have finished interiors. This is a little well design that I got from uh, Fwip, who's an excellent builder, and I think it's a really cute little well design that you can fit into a, a 2 by 2 uh, uh, area, and uh, yeah, it just fits in really nicely. This right here was actually the first house I built for this area, and so it does have a lot of my storage stuff and with the shaders it gets a little bit dark but basically I just have a some of my original storage in here. As the sun rises this new Minecraft day we can check out this uh, next house right here where I've tried to fit in a little tree and uh, I went with sort of a, a new roof style that isn't stairs for both of these houses and I do think it looks pretty good. I think it's uh, it is difficult to use full blocks for, for roofs but it can definitely pay off. And this house uh, is actually one of the ones that does have uh, a fully decorated interior, and I think we can check out the interiors in in another episode. We'll, we'll work on the world tour for this one. Uh, but as you walk over here, you can see that this is actually a mushroom biome that I've been building over, and we can definitely check out the bottom of it later. You'll see it, but I'm just sort of building the terrain on top of it to have no mobs spawn. Uh, in most of my area, and uh, yeah, so <laughs> it makes it sort of a pain to have to terraform the whole thing. So outside of this house is definitely a good place to get a view of the castle as it stands at the moment. So we'll definitely get a better look, but what I wanted to build is this castle that's on two different peaks, two different mountaintops, and what you'll notice is there are actually three. There's the one in the back too, and just have this giant arch bridge in the middle in between them. And I do think I succeeded. You know, things never really turn out the way you want them to. That's sort of the uh, the burden of the artist, if you will. And uh, yeah, uh, but we'll check it out. You'll you'll see. I hope you like it. Coming back down, uh, we'll be coming this way to get to the next level. I tried to make these roads as interconnected as possible to have many branching paths uh, to get to more interesting places, just so that it's more fun to explore. Uh, I do have this temporary hole in the wall to get to my little storage area. My plan right here is to make a some kind of a small house. I haven't figured out what I want yet, and I haven't worked on this area for quite a while since basically the release of 1.16. Uh, so we'll see what we put there in the future. But yeah, coming up, uh, we've got just these sort of pathways up the cliff. And so yeah, here's the first look at this crane up here, which I'm not sure I'm all that happy with, but it's definitely kind of the vibe I'm going for. And yeah, you've basically got this stronger crane to pick up stuff for, for the houses up here. And as you can see, the houses are way bigger up here than down here. You've got basically houses this kind of size for the lower levels. And I wanted the higher levels to be a little bit fancier, you know, slightly uh, richer people living up here. 
Uh, and this house, both these houses actually have full interiors uh, that I could show you later. But yeah, you've got this house coming up. You've got a little garden in the back. Uh, and <laughs> so far, I mean, if you walk off the cliff here, it's into an ocean. It's where the biome ends. So I am going to have to extend that at some point. Uh, but coming in here, I haven't really finished the uh, front garden of this house. Uh, but what I really like about this one is it's where I started building these little, uh, I don't know, these sort of entrance ways with the leaves. And I think they look kind of good. You have to use your imagination a little bit to see them as rose bushes around these sort of scaffolding pillars. But I do think they turn out really well and look nice. So I recommend putting some in your world. They're pretty good. And then I made this cute little greenhouse uh, where I fit in as much as I could. And I do think it looks really nice with all these little potted plants. And I put some bees in here just because I thought they might enjoy it. I don't know. I think it's cute. But yeah, some potatoes, cacti, flowers, a little melon. Just anything you'd have in a greenhouse. I mean, check out the wonderful view you get from this balcony. You can just look up at the castle. You can look out over the kingdom. And you can see exactly how unfinished this is. My little viewing platform over there. But I got, I got big plans for this place. Huge plans. Coming back through the entrance garden, we've got this road that continues this way. And I haven't done the actual texturing going forward here, so that's something I am going to have to do. But I am going to continue a path this way and have houses over here overlooking this place. So you've got this little... Uh, this little area out here where you get a really good lookout spot over the whole place and I'm contemplating putting a tree right here you could like sit under and read maybe and look out over the kingdom look out over the bay down there and look out over this area which I plan to make a vineyard so basically just have a bunch of uh, grapevines growing all the way up here and uh, some kind of vineyard up over there and I think that's gonna look really great especially from up there uh, and so Coming over this way, you can walk up to the castle this way, but you can also walk over here and there's a path to get up. Uh, the reason it is that way is because I've built this giant area over here, this giant field. So what you can see is there's a path that goes all the way down there. And then there's this area out here. And this is actually where the mushroom biome ends and there are a few patches of it. But my plan is to cover this with uh, big fields and build a giant windmill up here on some terrain that I'm going to build, and a little windmill, a little milling village uh, just outside the castle to to help it out. And we're going to get a good look at this place, don't you worry. We're, we're going to get a look from up there, we're going to get a look from, from the inside, uh, don't you worry about it. So as we approach the castle walking up these steps, basically the plan is to have a lot of greenery up here as well. So I've decorated the mountains a little bit. As you can see, this bridge is covered in these vines. And I've decorated the mountains with this stuff. And the plan is to have it sort of be lush and overgrown everywhere to fit the theme of the first area and the way it kind of is down in the, the deepest valley. Uh, and it's basically something I haven't gotten to yet. But in time, that's what's going to happen. It's something I sort of do and I have a little bit of time and just want to listen to a podcast or, or something. I build up some cliffs or I build up some some vines but as you approach the castle here you've got this this uh, bridge which is actually on a diagonal as well it was a real pain to build but i do think it came out really nicely uh, and i really wanted you to sort of walk up under this bridge i thought it would make for a cool cool entrance to a castle and as you can see over here it's really where the castle uh, <laughs> or even the whole world drops off into the ocean uh, but my plan is to put another gatehouse here, so technically I guess the castle build isn't finished. Uh, but another gatehouse kind of like this to make it make it sort of a back entrance of sorts into the area. And as you come up these steps, you've got this giant gate, which I think came out pretty nice. And with some redstone magic, I made it so that these doors open and this door into this little uh, guardhouse. So as you come in, you sort of have this platform up here where defending archers could maybe shoot intruders or something with these little hatches or you could shoot through or just maybe over the wall. And it's also got an entrance into the guard tower over here, uh, which which are actually fully decorated over here. They do have some just some little spaces to to watch over the kingdom. But 
as you come into the castle, you do have this little entrance area that has some storage. And once you turn the corner, you get into the courtyard over here. And I do think that this turned out really, really well. I am very happy with this. Have this little tree over here, some storage, <laughs> a little kitty. Uh, but yeah, basically the way I built this, I divided it up into areas that a castle would have. And I think we can check out the interior of this castle in an upcoming episode. But basically there's a kitchen in here and living quarters for the staff. There's a giant dining room in here. And then I, <laughs> my love of arches just sort of shines through again. I've got this area uh, where you, you know, can enter the bridge, obviously. But yeah, like I said, I think this courtyard turned out really well. If you do want to see the interior of this castle and how I build castle interiors, leave a comment telling me you want to see that. I'll probably show you in an upcoming episode anyway, but we have a lot of things to build in this kingdom. So uh, it might take a while before we get the tour. So walking across the bridge here, you can see the rest of the castle. And the point of this was sort of to make it so that this is where you have the dining area. You've got the staff, the kitchen and everything. And it's the first area you get to. The only way to get up here is through that gate. And so it makes it very defensible to have this bridge as well. And another station where you could maybe put archers or something across here. And again, another arch. You know how I love my ar arches at this point. And you get into this area. And so it is looking a little bare at the moment. Uh, I am planning to put a tree right here and maybe put a, a smaller tree right here. So far, it turned out sort of the way I wanted. It's kind of difficult to see with shaders, but this is a, uh, a forge. It gets pretty dark. Uh, but I got inspired very heavily, even with the bridge and all that, by Care Trolda in Skellige of uh, The Witcher 3. So if you've played that game, you might recognize that they do have a, a forge uh, <laughs> up on top of a, a castle on a mountain, uh, which, yeah, this is where I store my netherite armor. I'm working on getting some chain mail for some sets here, uh, maybe putting some weapons on the wall, doing some invisible item frames. We'll see. This part of the castle actually doesn't have an interior yet. So if you, um, if you like the interior in there, once I show it, maybe we can tackle this this interior on camera but the point over here was to have the living quarters for the uh, the royal family or the, the lords of this uh, this region and to have a throne room in here and it's all interconnected so far but uh, I am gonna need to do the decoration of the interior and I think that's gonna be good and so coming up this way we can get to the top of the castle And as you can see, it's a bit dark there on the inside. It's not filled with anything, but I've got this stained glass window. Uh, and I think this com combination of colors uh, makes a really nice stained glass uh, window in vanilla Minecraft. I've, I've used it all over the build. I've used it right there. And you'll see from the outside of the castle once we take a fly around. But yeah, as you walk up here, you get to this tower, which does have this little section that juts out like this. And I think it looks pretty interesting, but I don't know. I'm, I, I'm contemplating changing it. We'll, we'll see what happens. But so far, I think it's, it's kind of nice. And this is the last part of the castle that I've built. So it is totally not furnished on the interior. I just have this block is the only part of the second floor. But I do love how this comes out. This is a way better look at it. So yeah, definitely tell me if you want to see this furnished and totally decorated on the interior. But for now, we'll be checking out the outside. So down there, you can see a better look into the courtyard, and you get a real good view of the kingdom from up here. So I think once we get that stuff built, it's going to look really, really nice. But coming down to the backside over here, I think it's time to maybe take a look from the, from the air. And so... Over here on the back side, as you can see, the mountain is not built at all. I, I've lit it up a little bit so that monsters don't spawn, but we're going to be building this whole mountain. I've built this side up, and yeah, I just think it's going to look really good once it's, uh, once it's built. Over here from this side, we've got the castle from this angle, a lot of towers. And I did build, build some flags last second that I do think add to the look a lot. But going over here, what we can do is take a look 
at the full thing. Over here, you get a really good look at the finished product. And I say finished, even though it's not really totally finished, because as I said, we are going to be putting the greenery that you can see on the left uh, mountain peak sort of everywhere. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's going to look a lot better once that's there. Uh, we're also going to be putting right here this giant wheat field and the, the windmill up there. Additionally, the plan for down here, you can sort of see where I've marked out where I'm going to put some trees, but I'm going to make this a, a forest right here. So extend the forest a little bit, maybe onto up here so that you walk up through a forest there and, and the vineyard over here, as I told you. But yeah, it's I think it's going to be crazy. So far, it's been really fun. I've been working on this since the day 1.16 came out. And I just feel like at this point, I want to share with whoever watches all the progress that I make on this world. So if we just take a little fly down here, I do have a few things to show you because you may be wondering, where am I getting all my resources from? And I'm happy to show you. So again, <laughs> backsides right here, not finished. We'll be working on it. But coming over here inside of this house, we do have a lot of stuff that's important to see. And I will be turning off shaders now because it looks kind of weird on the inside otherwise. All right, here we are. As you can see, it looks a little bit different without the shaders on. I turned the brightness up to the max for uh, the video as well, so it doesn't look as good in the dark spots like that. However, uh, coming into this house, I have a little villager that I traded string for emeralds uh, with for a while when I didn't have a better trading system. But in here I have my map, which uh, I do need to expand a little bit uh, to the south so that we can see what's going on. But it does show everything that I've built so far in this area. And you get a good overview. In here, I actually have this little scaffolding piece. And so what I do have over here, the first stop you come down to is this little, this little honey farm that I think is full at the moment. Yeah, I haven't touched it for a while because I have so much honey. And coming down even further, as you can see, if I press F3, we are down to like Y5 right here. And the reason why is that I needed a creeper farm for, for gunpowder. And so I built it right here. And you might be thinking, hey, antler boy, you can't build a creeper farm in a mushroom biome. And that is totally true. No mobs will spawn. And so what I did is I built a creeper farm and... You can hear them dying up there along with some spiders. And so how it works is I just made a, a creeper farm without putting the, the glass pillars in there. Um, I can link the creeper farm down below if you want to. Uh, so I get spiders as well, which is very useful because I get I get string as well. Let's, let's turn these guys uh, down a little bit. And so what I do I, <laughs> is I get a lot of gunpowder and string since there's basically nowhere else for them to spawn. And I'll show you exactly how it is that they can spawn. So what I've done is this bay is surrounded by mushroom biome, which the grass is, is which is why the grass is so green. However, if you get out here and you actually take a look, if I press F3, we're still in a mushroom field. But as you can see, it switches over to ocean. And so this area in here is an ocean biome. So I just dug down. And I built my creeper farm right below this ocean biome. So what about other resources? What about, you know, sugar cane, food, everything like that? So coming down here to the backside, which has been increasingly more difficult to get to as I build this place out, I basically have to waste several rockets just to get around the mountain to get here. And that's also why I have my shortcut area over there. But down here, I basically just have my farms. It is my, I call it my bat cave because I just have all my gadgets down here. I've got my automatic sugarcane farm, which is nothing special. It's just some observers uh, with with some pistons and some sugarcane growing. And from it, I have more sugarcane than I'll ever need. It is not a big deal at all. And so this is where I've had my, my current smelting area. It's nothing fancy. It's nothing good at all. And I have all my chests. And it's just sort of 
been an expanding underground space where I plan on building even more farms and eventually a proper storage room with a sorting system and, and <laughs> everything along those lines. So up here, under the castle, I have this, uh, this little villager breeder. It's turned off at the minute. I believe this is Logical Geek Boy's design that I've followed, and I've also followed his design for making this uh, redstone. Uh, well, I say redstone, but there's basically no redstone to it. Uh, th this sort of redstone-powered villager breeding station, and uh, so I have all the villagers I need right here, and I have this zombie that if I tr flick these levers, he will kill them, and I have a bunch of potions I've been brewing so that they give me the trades that I want. And that's how I've gotten my carrots. Uh, I've been trading stone to these guys for emeralds, which is basically free paper with these guys. Uh, and I've got s some of the book trades that I want. Uh, I plan on expanding this as well and making it look all nice. For the time being, I think that that is basically all there is to see from the exterior in my world. So. Yeah, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. I, I really hope you uh, you like the designs of my world. And I am really going to be trying to pump out as many videos as I can. Now, you might also be wondering, why am I starting a survival world that's already developed? I already have netherite tools. I already have some stuff built. Well, I'll give you my reasoning. And the reason I am doing that is because I'm a builder, okay? In this game, I build. That's what I do. And the sort of initial stages of getting tools and getting everything ready, that's something you can see on any other channel. And it's definitely something I could do, but I don't really think it would add that much. So the plan here is to make some nice time lapses, build some cool stuff, expand this kingdom, and we'll, we'll take it from there. All right. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I'm just going to leave you with this short cinematic of the castle and... I really hope you enjoyed.